In this lecture series, we've been talking about the vital place of the heart in spiritual formation. We've looked at understanding the heart from a biblical perspective and also trying to understand how God changes our hearts through conversion and consecration. But even after the heart is, is uh, converted, it still may not be free. There may be blockages. We've talked about guilt, we've talked about bitterness, and we've talked about anxiety. Then we've talked about how to strengthen the heart. We strengthen the heart by guarding it diligently and by nourish, nourishing it constantly. So we've covered a lot of ground. But to pull it all together and to make it all work, we need to understand how God empowers our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So today in this lecture, we'll be talking about empowering the changed heart, the role of the Holy Spirit. It's impossible solely by our own efforts to live the Christian life. Sometimes people say to me that uh, being a Christian and living the Christian life is hard. I say, no, it's not hard. It's impossible to do in your own strength. That's why God has given us the Holy Spirit. And yet he's the neglected member of the Trinity. We talk about God the Father, God the Son, but we know very little about God the Holy Spirit. And yet he's the power source. He's the one that needs to control our lives and empower us and empower our hearts to live out all the truth we've been talking about through this series of lectures. So we want to understand the role of the Holy Spirit. We're born again by the Spirit of God. John 3, 5 says we're born again by the Word and by the Spirit. We're regenerated. The Spirit of God convicts us. Then the Spirit of God renews us and causes us to come alive spiritually, whereby we were dead spiritually. Now we've come alive because the Spirit of God regenerates us, causes us to come alive to God. Not only that, but the moment that we are born again by the Spirit of God, He indwells us. The Spirit of God comes to live within us. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20 says, What? Don't you know that your body is the Spirit of the living God who lives within you? Every born-again believer is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Not only that, but the Holy Spirit also is the one that baptizes us into the body of Christ, the universal church. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, you were baptized by one spirit into the body of Jesus Christ. That's what makes us part of the family of God, part of his mystical body. And then it also, the scripture also teaches us that we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. That means that we're guaranteed by the Holy Spirit that we'll arrive at our destination. He's the one that seals us. All of those things happen at the moment of conversion. You're indwelt by the Spirit of God, baptized by the Spirit of God, and sealed by the Spirit of God. But now, what needs to happen, and this is not, it does not happen automatically, is the empowerment of the Spirit of God, getting in tune with the Spirit of God, making sure the Spirit of God has access to you. The importance of the Holy Spirit cannot be overly overemphasized. He's that internal power source. God gave us Jesus Christ that we might have eternal life. God gave us the Holy Spirit for our internal life. And just as important it is that we know that we have eternal life through Jesus Christ, we need to have that certainty that we have a power source for our internal life. There are many strategies that people have proposed on how to live the Christian life. And some say that because you still have this old nature in you, even though you're born again, by the Spirit, and dwelt by the Spirit, sealed by the Spirit, baptized by the Spirit, uh, you still have an old nature. So the question comes, how is that old nature controlled? There are people that teach 
that it's possible to eradicate the old nature, just to completely get rid of it by prayer and fasting and begging and pleading with God. There can come a time when the old nature can be extricated, removed from you. The problem is that is not accurate, it's not biblical, it doesn't work, it's not true. Other people, and probably more commonly, teach suppression, not eradication, but suppression. What you need to do by rules and regulations, you need to suppress the old nature, keep it under control. And the way to do that, they would say, is like the Pharisees. And many churches have a list of rules. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do the other thing. The problem with that, it's all outward. And rules without relationship lead to rebellion. It doesn't work. Because what happens is that internal pressure builds up and then there's an explosion or an implosion. I've seen it happen. People try to conform to the rules and regulations of the church to do whatever they're supposed to do to be a good Christian. They end up becoming a better actor, not a better Christian, but they know how to say the right words and do the right things and not do certain things. Therefore, people think they're a good Christian. But all the while, internally, maybe all kinds of struggles going on and that untroubled heart that we've been talking about. God's way is not eradication, it's not suppression, but it's what I call counteraction. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He counteracts our old nature as we get in tune with the Holy Spirit and understand what his role is and what our role is. And we've, we've seen what he has done for us or what God has done for us when we became a believer. Now we need to see what our, our role is in all of this. The Christian life is a supernatural life and it has to be lived by supernatural means. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. What's our responsibility in all this? God's told us what he has done, now what are we to do? We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.